thinking that most of you are probably like we are, you know, happy to be back in Orchard Park and uh, guys are working hard and uh, glad to be driving home at night. The, the veterans, the rookies of course, are hotel bound, uh, which is not all bad uh, for them. But it is good to be back. Uh, we have a lot of work to get done uh, as we are approaching the regular season and uh, guys are working hard and we look forward to another preseason opportunity that's, that's awaiting us. So uh, it should be a, a good week of work for us. You know, uh, St. John's Fisher was good uh, for the time that we were there, uh, but it's good to break camp and come back home as well. You know, you look forward to when you break camp for a lot of different reasons, and uh, it was a good experience up there, but it's good to be home. You saw Dane, who didn't play in the preseason opener. What was the thinking behind that? Just wanted to be able to, John, take a good look at the young corners or as much as we could. Uh, we have a pretty good feel for Dane, and, 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 and he'll get some work before the preseason is done, I'm sure. Uh, but we wanted to get as many views of our young corners as we could, and, and it'll be the same way in these final two preseason games. We need to get a real good evaluation of, uh, of the two of them and, and make a good decision leading up to our, our season opener. In terms of competition, how does, where does that place him in terms of you have a comfortable feeling for where he is and getting more of a look of them? Is he, does that slot him differently in a competition? Uh, start at the end of the season? Yeah, for sure. You know, we, he's played games for us. Uh, his experience uh, matters, although it's limited uh, in the grand scheme of things. But uh, for us, you know, he, he's ahead of the, 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 the rookie corners that we have. And we just needed to be able to see them more. And we, like I said, we want to see more of them in the next couple of ball games as well. What, was, what were your impressions of um, Kair and Christian in that first group? I was really impressed with their work. I mean, they both uh, did a really good job. Uh, they were both targeted. And when they had opportunities to make plays, they made plays. Um, they were physical. Uh, they, they got their hands on balls. They were good in man coverage. For the most part, the eyes were where they should have been in zone. Uh, so we were pleased uh, with their first outing. Um, and now with the practices that we have remaining, along with the two preseason games, uh, you want them just to continue to grow and develop. And we got to keep putting them out there and putting them in different situations uh, and see how they respond. Wesley, they both respond sort of like nothing's too big for them. Sure. But is there a part where you're thinking almost like you think you know, but you don't really know yet because you know what's coming? Yeah. It, it, how does that work with these young guys who have confidence, which is a good thing? That's a really good observation. I've had that thought in my mind because uh, – even though they're doing some good things now, I just know when you get to the regular season, I mean, that's a big bullseye on a rookie corner's uh, chest. And, you know, you, there are more things thrown at you. And we're trying to throw as much as we can at them this time of the year. Uh, but there's nothing like, you know, being in game situations. And the good thing is they're both very confident in their abilities. And that showed in the way they played uh, in this, this first preseason game. And uh, that's a big deal at corner. But you're right. Uh, there are some things coming that, you know, there's no way to really simulate. They just have to go out and, 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 and perform in those situations. And as I mentioned, we're trying to give them as many looks and put them in as many different situations as we can. But there's nothing like playing on a, a live game. Like I said, Joe, it would be great if we were to get him. Uh, if uh, Nate Bresky, our trainer, head trainer, were to come by this morning and say, hey, Tre Davis is going to be ready to go tomorrow, that would be welcome news. Uh, but in the meantime, really got to do a good job of getting Christian, uh, getting Kyrie ready, along with Dane, and, and, and see what happens from there. Um, so we're just kind of crossing our fingers, hoping we'll get Tre Davis uh, soon. But uh, in the meantime, we got to get, get the other guys ready. There's so many pluses to his game, Alina. To, uh, you know, the experience now at this stage of his career, his competitive fire, um, you know, his ability to be able to match up on the top receivers in our league, that's rare to have a guy like that. Uh, the confidence that he plays with, 
uh, the takeaways that he gets for us, the big plays, the punch outs, the interceptions, and then the intangible, his leadership. You know, guys follow him, not necessarily because of how verbal he is from a leadership standpoint, but his example. He's such a hard worker that's so talented that whether you're a linebacker or a defensive lineman, you see his work ethic, it becomes infectious. And you like to have your better players with that type of work ethic. And uh, that rubs off on the other guys. And, um, and then the fact that he's a really good player, along with all those other things I mentioned. Uh, but those are the things that, ma that make him really good. His competitive fire is supreme. It's, it's at a different level. I've seen that the, the coach in him, uh, as he's talking with Kyrie, as he's talking with Kristen, Jamarcus, uh, the different young guys that we have in the secondary, um, you know, just trying to work with them and, and, and be around them in the meetings, uh, watching their, their drill work and giving comments. He's been real positive. He's been an encouragement uh, to our other defensive backs. And his presence, uh, I think, helps uh, those guys, the fact that he's around. Um, you commented on the rookie corners already um, and they're playing zone coverage, but just overall the rookies as a whole transitioning from playing mostly man in college to playing a lot more zone in the NFL. What were your impressions of the rookies after their first preseason game and how tough is it to make that transition from mostly man to zone? Yeah, it, it's it's definitely different. Um, and I don't know, Matt, if you could see it with our linebackers a little bit, you know, coming from, like you mentioned, a lot of zone in college and then playing some more man uh, concepts here in the pros or vice versa. Uh, some teams in college are heavy man and less zone. And, you know, we're a little bit of both. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a big transition playing as much zone as we will some weeks. And there's other weeks where we'll, we're going to be heavy man. Uh, but for a guy to go from spot drop into a certain, certain, area, certain area on the field to having a lock up on some premier running backs or premier wide receivers all over the field. Uh, that takes some skill and it takes some work as well. And it's a big transition uh, because of the talent level of the people that you're going against. So the technique, the fundamentals that are required, and that's where we come in as coaches to help them with that, is of the utmost importance. And that's a big transition for a guy coming from college where it's more scheme, scheme, scheme. Uh, because of the number of hours they can practice compared to us, where it's just all football all the time, uh, it's, a, it's a big transition for sure.